Young Man in Love, an extract from Yuri Stein's Post Office by Hermann Charles Bosman. You won't listen to me, Opa Becker said. You never let me finish what I'm going to say. Always, you just let me get so far. Then somebody says something foolish, and so I can't get to the important thing. Now, what I wanted to say is that Atno Dia is quite right, and Johnny Kun is coming here. He's coming here this afternoon because he wants to know what we think. A young man in love is like that. He wants to know what we've got to say. And all the time he will be laughing to himself secretly about the things we're saying. A young man in love is like that also. And he's titivating himself with the short blade of a pocket knife and a handful of dry grass. Well, you've got no idea how vain a young man in love can be. And he's not making himself all stylish for the girl's sake, but for his own sake. It's himself that he thinks is so wonderful. He knows less than anybody what she is like, the girl he's in love with. And it's only the best kind of pig's fat he'll mix with suit to shine his bought boots with. Because he's in love with a girl, he thinks he's something. Oh yes, Johnny Kun will come round this afternoon, all right. And that's what I want to say. At this point, Opa Becker was interrupted once more. But because it was Yuri Stein who broke in upon the dissertation, Opa Becker yielded with good grace. The post office we were sitting in was, after all, Yuri Stein's own voorkamer. There was something of the spirit of old world courtesy in the manner of Opa Becker's surrender. You, then, Yuri Stein, Opa Becker said, you talk. Several of us looked in the direction of the kitchen where we were relieved to see that the door was closed. That meant that Yuri Stein's wife had not heard the low expression Opa Becker had used. What I would like to say, Yuri Stein said, is that I had the honor to drive Jeffro Pauline Gerber to her home in my mule cart. That day she arrived here at my post office, getting off from the government lorry and all. What do you mean by and all? Geisberg van Tonde demanded. Yuri Stein looked around him with an air of surprise. But you were all there, Yuri Stein declared. All of you were here. Maybe that's what I meant by an all. I'm sure I don't know. But you did see Pauline Gerber. You, each of you, saw her. When she alighted here that day from the Zierest lorry on her return from the Cape Finishing School. You saw the way she walked around here in my voorkamer picking her heels up high, and I don't blame her, and her chin up in the air, and as pretty as you like. You all saw how pretty she was now, didn't you? And the way she smelt. Did you smell her? You must have. It was too lovely. It just shows you the kind of perfume you can get in the Cape. And I'm sure that if a church elder smelt her, even if he was an enkel gereformeerde elder, from the furthest part of the Waterberger, I'm sure that the Waterberg elder would have known that Pauline Gerber had class. Just from spelling her, I mean. I'm sure that the scent that Pauline bought at the Cape must have cost at least seven shillings and sixpence a bottle. Look at my wife now, for instance. Well, I once bought my wife a bottle of perfume at the Indian store at Ramutsa, And what I say is, you can smell the difference between my wife and Pauline Gerber. Chris Wellman, who had not spoken much so far, hastened to add that there were other ways too in which you could tell the difference. It was an innuendo that, fortunately enough, escaped general attention. For it was Johnny Kuhn himself that came in at the front door of the post office at that moment. In one way, it was the Johnny Kun we had always known, and yet also it wasn't him. In some subtle fashion, Johnny Kun had changed. After greeting us, he went and found a place for himself on a rimpy chair, sitting very upright. 
He seemed from his manner to be almost unaware of our presence as he whittled the matchstick to a fine point and then commenced scraping out the grime from under one of his fingernails. Geisbert von Tonder, who always liked getting straight down to things, was the first to talk. Nice bit of rain you've been having out your way, Johnny, Geisbert van Tonder remarked. Dam should be pretty full, I imagine. Oh yes, indeed, Johnny answered. Plenty of water in the spray too, I should think, Geisbert continued. Yes, that is very true, Johnny replied. New grass must be coming along all right in the flakte where you burnt, Geisbert van Tonder went on. Yes, very nicely, Johnny agreed. What's the matter with you, man? Can't you talk? Geisbert demanded. You know all right what I'm trying to say. Have you seen her at all since she's been back? I saw her yesterday, Johnny Kuhn said, on the road near their house. I had to go quite a long distance out of my way to be passing by there at the time. Geisbert von Tonder made a quick calculation. A matter of just under 11 miles out of your way. Counting in the shortcuts through the Vatox, he announced. Did she have much to say? Johnny Kuhn shook his head. Uh, please don't ask me, he almost implored of Geisbert, because I really can't remember. We did speak, I know. But after she had gone, there was nothing we said that I could recall. It was all so different after she had gone. I wish I could remember what we said. What I said must have all sounded very foolish to her, I'm sure. Geisbert van Tonder was not going to allow Johnny Kuhn to get by so easily. Well, how did she look? Geisbert asked. That's what I also tried to remember afterwards, Johnny Kuhn declared. How she looked, what she did, all that. But I just couldn't remember. After she had gone... It was all just like it had been a dream, and there was nothing that I could remember for sure. She was picking yellow flowers there by the side of the road, she was, to stick in her hair. Or she was carrying a sack of firewood over her back for the kitchen fire, she was. And it would have been just the same thing, the way I felt. But I don't know. All I was able afterwards... That's what I was trying to explain to them, Johnny, Opa Becker interjected. But they never let me finish anything I start to say. They always... Afterwards, Johnny Kuhn repeated, after she'd gone, that is, there was a kind of sweetness in the air. It was almost hanging in the air, sort of. Once I even thought that it might be a kind of scent. Like what the woman put on their clothes when they go to Nachmal. But of course I knew it couldn't be that. I mean, I knew Pauline wouldn't wear scent. I mean, she's not that kind. What I wanted to say earlier on when you all interrupted me, Opa Becker declared then, with an air of triumph, is that a young man in love is like that. <laughs>